Hello and welcome to lesson six of the GCC Design and Technology non-exam assessment. Um, today we are going to look at the design brief. It should take approximately one hour to complete. And here we go. So as ever, quick recap of what we've done so far in each lesson. Uh, lesson one and two, we, we picked the project that you wanted to undertake and we wrote a research plan. Lesson three, four and five was most of your research. Okay, we looked at the work of others and we looked at what your target market and client would like. Today, we're moving into section B of the MART scheme, which is looking at the design brief. So what is a design brief? Uh, I'm gonna read uh, what's on the screen right now. Uh, a design brief is a document for a design project developed by a person or team the designer or design team in consultation with the client or customer. They outline the deliverables and scope of the project, including any products or works, functions and aesthetics, timings and budgets. So it's a set of statements stating what you're planning to do. OK, often it would come right at the beginning of a, a project. If I take I did a redevelopment of my, my back garden a couple of years ago, I wrote myself a mini design brief before I started. Um, which is my overall sort of aim that I wanted to, to complete. Uh, and I followed that through. I followed that, that process all the way through and did designing, research, etc., and then made it. So we're going to produce a document. It's going to link to what our clients want and need. Uh, it's going to tell, explain overall what we're hoping the product will do. Uh, and we'll go through it step by step, a bit like the previous lesson where there's a, a bunch of questions you're going to need to ask. So where does this fit in the grand scheme of the mark scheme? Uh, so this is in section B, which is uh, 10 marks uh, out of our 100. And section B is the design brief and the specification. It's out of 10 marks, so we can probably work out that the design brief is worth five marks and the specification is worth about five marks. Uh, that's not 100% completely true, but actually it's a really good way of thinking about it. So this half page piece of work right now is worth half, uh, it's worth five entire marks on its own. It's actually quite, we're going to call it an expensive page on its own. So a comprehensive design brief, which clearly justifies how they have considered their users and clients needs. So it links back to lesson five uh, and links directly to the context. It links back to lesson one, where we picked the context. Now that, to be honest, when I read the mark scheme there, it's a bit wishy-washy. It doesn't quite explain what makes a good design brief. It just says it's gonna be a comprehensive design brief. So we need to unpick a little bit more about what information goes into our design brief. That's what we're gonna do on the next slide. So split again into two tasks each half an hour. So task 1A here is gonna be our first um, part of the context. And we're going to really link it to the context here, okay, uh, in paragraph one. So what of the three contexts have you chosen and why? I know you did this as a conclusion right very early on, so you can go back to that if you want and use some of the text in there. Remember your three contexts. Uh, what product have you chosen to design and why have you chosen that product? Okay. Uh, how does the product link to the context? So it's, you've got a context, you've got a product, How's they marry up? What problem or need is the product going to solve? So you might have said I'm making a lamp for homework and it's going to go for teenage lifestyle or multifunctional living. Um, and I, um, it's going to solve the problem of my workstation in my bedroom being too dark for me to, to do work at, well at night in particular. And I therefore find it difficult. That's really adding some meat onto the bones and explaining what problem you're trying to solve. And it makes somebody understand exact, a bit more about what you're designing and why. Okay. And then just very briefly linked to last lesson, who are you designing your product for? Okay. So just a very quick single sentence explaining who your client is again. Okay. They can read the entire client profile uh, for more information. Now, I don't normally uh, link to uh, other sources here, but the BBC Bite Science has got a really sort of quite detailed section uh, on design briefs. 
So it's worth just clicking on that link there if you want to get a few other ideas of things to write. Okay. Um, I, I actually went through it this morning and went, oh, I'll, I'll steal some of those ideas. So worth you guys having a, a look through there if you want to try and expand upon your design brief in a bit more detail. Moving on to paragraph two and three. So paragraph two, where's the product going to be? What will the product have to do to be successful? So we're not here explaining exactly what you're going to design. We're saying roughly what you want it to do, roughly what you might want it to look like. Are there any rules and constraints it's going to fit in? It's, let's say it's going, to, it's going to have to fit on my desk. That might be, if I'm making a lamp, really an important constraint. I'm not going to say it must be 50 centimetres in size because that's too detailed. What we're trying to get here is roughly it's going to live on a desk, on the floor, in a car, in a kitchen. OK, some sort of basic bits of information there. And then how long are you going to give to make it? OK. Uh, paragraph three, this is where you can open up a little bit and sort of talk about what initial ideas you've got for the project. OK, if I said, look, tomorrow you're going to start making, which we're not, uh, what would you make? OK, what do you think you might make? And use the word I think I will make, I might make. My first thoughts are, those are the type of word sentence starters you might use for paragraph three. Because it's not saying what you will make, it's saying what you're thinking of making. OK, and thinking what it might look like. Now, I've got a few do's and don'ts. and I've got some more sentence starters for you as well, just to, to help you out. So briefly, some do's, to, do's and don'ts. Do add some relevant photos. Uh, this, is, this page could be quite a, a wordy page, could be quite boring. So a few actual useful photos. If you said it's going to sit on a desk, whatever the product might be, a photo of the desk of the location. Just add a few relevant photos in there just to make the page look a little more interesting do explain your answers in full sentences once again don't just use don't write the question and the answer write it all as one paragraph don't write the questions do link it to the research you've undertaken so if you've done research already and you've got some good ideas from your research tell me about them in your design brief don't write your brief with an outcome in mind so I'm going to say I'm designing a multifunctional lamp here, so a bad example here, a wabble, what a bad one would look like, um, would be to say, I am going to make a um, multifunctional desk light that holds pens and pencils and lights up that's shaped like a porcupine. And that's, it must be a porcupine, because that is design fixation. That's really clear. This is what I'm going to make. Say, oh. Some ideas I have is I might use animals as a theme to get some cool designs. Uh, one of my favourite animals is a porcupine. Fine, but saying, I will make a porcupine. Not, not a good idea. I don't have a clue where porcupine came from there. Don't create an overambitious brief. Uh, I've just recently set some work for Keysage Free. And one student said, as part of their practical work, they're going to make a mobile phone. I wouldn't even have the first clue where to start myself in making wealth, and that requires a team of people working over many years to do that. So don't be over ambitious here in, when you're writing about what you're going to do. It's like I'm making my multifunctional lamp and when I whistle, it's going to move around the desk and come to me and light up the piece of work I'm pointing at. Possibly a little bit over ambitious for a GCC project. OK, so just be mindful of that in your write up here. So here are a few sentence starters that you may find useful. Uh, I intend to design. I would like to design, maybe. So those are some of the words you and sentences you might work quite well. Not I must do this. I I don't want you to be too specific and too focused at this point. Okay, and then once again, there's a set of connectives there that may be useful uh, in linking what you've said to the reason why you want it. Okay. And once again, next slide, we have some waggles. So a couple of waggles here. Uh, same two students as actually the last lesson that I used. Um, both are, are decent waggles in terms of explaining uh, what the, the product's going to be and who it's for. Um, have a read through. I'm, I'm not going to dwell on these in too much more detail. I did cut the pages down so they fitted on quite well. Uh, so there aren't any pictures here, but there were pictures on their pages 
uh, back when they produced the work. Okay, so that's a couple of uh, good ones for you. Hopefully you found that an informative lesson. As ever, any questions, get in touch. Okay, we are here to help um, and look forward to seeing your design briefs. Remember, 5 March, so it's quite an important page.